Today, I've got a simple but not easy warm up for the striking hand for claw hammer banjo. Welcome to Banjo Quest. So, over on Banjo Quest in my Patreon project, we are working on Cluck Old Hen. And we're not just working on a generic version of Cluck Old Hen, we are starting to work on Bertie Mae Dickens' amazing version, which has some very strange tonal choices. And I've transcribed that faithfully to her playing, and we're dissecting it over on Banjo Quest. If you would like to join us for that, it's kind of towards the beginning of the month. This is a really great time to join Patreon. Hop on over, the link is in the description below. Today, I wanna to just warm up with you because Cluck Old Hen, regardless of version, relies heavily on a really nice, solid right hand approach. So I wanna help you build finesse today with a very simple exercise that is good for both beginners and experts alike. Let me show you how it goes. So we're going to delete our fretting hand from this process for today. And we're just gonna be working on a double thumb pattern on strings one and five. There are some twists and turns to this exercise. So those of you who are saying, I can do that in my sleep, wait till the end of the video and I will show you some challenges that I want you to try and let me know how you do in the description below. So grab your banjos. We are tuned to A or A modal. Doesn't really matter for this exercise. Just get into some semblance of A and we're gonna play this together. So our pattern is a cycle of four downstrokes and every downstroke is going to be accompanied by an upstroke on the fifth string. This is how it sounds. That's our basic double thumbing pattern. This is the foundation of claw hammer banjo. This is why this is important. If this doesn't sound great, if it doesn't sound musical, then nothing will sound musical when you play it. This double thumbing pattern, this basic one five pattern on the strings has to sound great and you have to be able to do it instinctively in order for everything else to sound good. That's why we're working on it today. So let's cycle that together and your goal as a player right now is to get the downstrokes and the upstrokes to sound equal. They need to be equal intensity, equal volume, almost for you experts, try to get them to sound have the same quality of tone, which is really challenging because they're two very different mechanics operating on the strings. Let's try it together on my count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. One. time. One, two, three, four. Let's play it a little faster. One, two, three, four. One. 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 Nice and balanced. One. All right, now let's have some fun with this. We're gonna make this super quiet. So we're gonna start at middle volume and then we're gonna notch down into lower volume. Here we go. We're gonna give it two cycles and then we're gonna get really quiet. On my count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, get ready. Four, one, two, three, four, two. Back to middle volume. Again. One more time. Middle. Quiet. So now we're going to think in twos. We're gonna do two middle volumes and two quiet volumes. And you really want the difference between middle volume and quiet to be ex as extreme as you can make it. It should be very noticeable. In fact, if it's not noticeable, then you're, you need to work harder and maybe slow this down and get used to making really quiet sounds on the instrument. Let's try it. One, two, three, four. Too loud, too quiet. Now, 
the importance of notching is making sure that you're turning your volume on a dime so that you're not fading down to quiet and then fading back up to middle volume, but you're instantly calling forth loud notes and then quieting them down and having no transition time in between. Let's see if we can do this with a one count. One, two, three, four. That is an extremely difficult pattern. That is a very hard thing to do. If you can master that, all bets are off. You will be able to call forth and quiet down any notes that you want to. That is a very powerful way to train finesse in your striking hand. All right, let's add something to the mix. This is all well and good, but it's sort of pure exercise and not very musical. So let's put a musical stamp on it. Let's think in terms of an actual tune. If we think in terms of a traditional old time tune, we find often the old recordings are emphasizing the one of the measure. So that's what we're going to emphasize. We're gonna throw down hard on the one and then everything else is going to be really quiet. This is a great way to build your ability to create a strong pulse on the one. Here we go, let's give it a shot. One, two, three, four, one. out. We do a lot of double thumbing patterns, especially in the tunes that we're learning on Banjo Quest right now, Cluck Old Hen. We're going to be using this double thumbing pattern a lot in the A part of Cluck Old Hen. So your double thumbing pattern needs to be on point. It needs to be in control, perfect control of your striking hand. And if you can, we can start adding these pulses to the one, which will really make your delivery of the tune, well, groovy. Having that pulse on the one creates an incredibly compelling rhythm, and this is how we get there. All right, I've got one more game for you experts out there. Here we go. We are going to accent the downstrokes, and we're gonna make the fifth string quiet, and then we're gonna reverse that. We're going to accent our upstrokes on the fifth string, and we're gonna make the downstroke quiet. So we'll start by accenting all downstrokes on my mark. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Now fifth string. One more time. Now up stroke. Now that's super challenging even for experts. I was struggling there a little bit. I need to dust that one off myself. That's great because it shows you the importance of downstrokes versus upstrokes. It also teaches you how different you can make a basic claw hammer pattern sound depending on how you accent it. So if you have a basic double thumbing pattern and you start accenting or lifting out those fist strings and having them be in your face or in the audience's face, you are completely changing the vibe of the phrasing. It's a very interesting technique and you don't need a whole lot of fancy stuff to do it. You just need good striking hand control, which is why I love these little warm up games. They're lots of fun and they really pay off when it comes to playing with others and playing in tunes. That's just scratching the surface of what you can do on strings one and five with the right hand. I will be going into more depth on this and I've got another series of games that I'm gonna be playing that is even more difficult than this and that will launch here on YouTube. So be sure you are subscribed and ring that little bell icon below so you get notifications when these videos come out. All right, and if you wanna join me over on Patreon and learn Bertie Mae Dickens' incredible version of Cluck Old Hen, hop on over there. I will see you next time on Banjo Quest. Going to the Western country now, Susan and a girl. Going to the Western country now, Susan and a girl.
living now. Susan and a girl by drinking whiskey and playing cards. Susan and a girl.